want to do right now, we want to dive into one of the most interesting books, should I say. He is no stranger to TV here um, on KTN News. I'm sure a lot of you have seen him on Hot Topics. But today he's wearing a different hat. Normally he wears a journalist hat when he's here on, uh, on Hot Topics. But today he's wearing his author hat. It's none other than Tony Mochama, a.k.a. Smitter. He's a lawyer, a journalist, as well as an author. And on my far end... I have Dr. Matunda Nechama, the CEO of Nesima Publisher. Now, Smita has come up, or rather he's written an amazing book, 2063, that shows where Kenya will be in about 45 years to come. Smita, Dr. Nechama, thank yes. you guys so much for being thank here. Thank you for having us. Such a pleasure. So, Smita, you decided to write a book showing where Kenya will be in 45 years. Just give an overall view to our viewers about what is in that book. Yeah, um, this book is about an old man mm -hmm. called Morgan Chamaroche, mm -hmm. um, but is existing in a world where, of course, they have uh, anti-aging genes. Mm -hmm. The technology is already happening, so he's not as old as a normal. He's like my publisher. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my publisher is about eighty, but you didn't think it. <laughs> and then, um, you know, the, the youth are very technologically insulated. Right. Um, people have become, it's become a very betting country. Uh -huh. I just saw earlier on you introduced the bet The bet master. master, yes, the story. So there's like virtual gambling going on. Uh -huh. The world has truly become a global village. People mm. can gamble even like uh, instead of casino, there are people sitting with people who are seeing Macau mm -hmm. or Venezuela, mm -hmm. but within gaming rooms. Mm -hmm. So you, we can see the way we are seated. So here, virtual reality hologram. becomes a real thing. It, yeah, it's a very VR world. Eh? Mm. It's a very strange world. And nothing in the book. I didn't do anything from guesswork. I took just a year to research about current technologies so that I could extrapolate into the future. Yeah. Well, even meat is industrial pro processed. Instead of killing animals, you have got a, just the substance which is already happening, like clean meat, so that food is, you know, and even teeth, you can print them when your tooth goes bad. And, yeah. Are you serious? Let me see the book because yes. this is too good. <laughs> but let me ask, um, in, yes. when you wrote this specific book, 2063, you've talked about how meat will be done differently, how betting will be done differently. Will we be able to download food Smita by 2063 from the internet? Because yes. if we won't be able to do that then, then... Uh, yeah, they, uh, they are knocking down malls down, <laughs> but there'll be no need for malls at all. There'll be drone deliveries. And we'll be able to download food because it's just uh, everything is t everything is chemical, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're already working on 3D technology mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. so you'll be able to download food, mm -hmm. yeah. Instead of cooking it, right? You'll be able just to download it. Okay. If somebody had told your grandmother in Botswana, yeah, a great grandmother, that one day people would be able to yeah. sit and watch the, live television, right? It is something so far fetched. Yes. Then, yes. Okay, so Dr. Matunda, why um, did you guys go ahead and publish this book, 2063? What is it that caught you and said, you know what, we want to be the publishing team behind this book? You see, uh, I thank you for having us in the studio uh, to talk about this. Back in time, I think it was 2010, mm -hmm. we put a context out there to talk about uh, people looking at where Kenya will be in 2063. Right. What is that path we will take? And what, that, what are those possibilities? So we call people to imagine if we took one path first another, where would we be uh, with respect to the cities, our social lives, our academia, our economy, and so on. Our so politics. we're interested in things that are futuristic. Because if you think about it, eh, we are not here uh, by accident. True. We're here because of the choices that uh, our forefathers, our independence leaders, and others made mm -hmm. at the time. Mm -hmm. So the condition today happened because of the, path, uh, the, cho the chosen path of our independence leaders. So what are those paths that will lead us to something of a harmonious nation, a successful, I mean, a technologically successful country, and uh, a leading power? So we asked people to imagine this. So when Tony came with this, it was actually a very warm surprise. Mm. So there was no issue of do we accept it or not. Mm -hmm. It was like this is what we are looking for mm -hmm. because uh, we want to ensure that people start thinking. If we start thinking about uh, that which we do on a daily basis. Right. We start thinking uh, of our interactions with our peers, our 
people who are different from us, mm -hmm. maybe from different ethnic groups, of different color, of different thinking, I, I maybe then we can treat other people yeah. differently. Yes. I, I want to jump in there and say, it's not just a rosy book. It's not like, a, like an utopian ideal. The book also has had Kenya, mm -hmm. it, it, which has gone through. Of mm -hmm. course, it's in the imagination, and I hope we never go through this. You know, and anyone does not. But we've had a civil war in the book in 2033. In 2033. To 36. Wow, that last three years. That lasts three years okay. and takes away like half a million lives mm. uh, before restructuring, mm. an organic restructuring, even constitutionally, mm. yeah. before they are forced into systems where there's a very strange sort of power system right. in that book. Eh? I mean, Smita, that's mm -hmm. very... Um, uh, what can I say, for you to foresee or rather to create a civil war that lasts for three years, where did that impression come from? Is it inspired by, uh, by our past political experiences as a nation for you to also, because you said you did a lot of research on the technology part, but what inspired for you to also say, let me add a civil war that lasts three years? <laughs> it's, it's because sometimes nations have to go undergo correctionals. Right. And uh, like you said, we did a bit of constitutional law. Can I boast here with working under Kivutha Kibuana? Uh -huh. Yeah, that was the girl, you know, uh, who taught us constitutional law. Mm. In Parklands, mm. but um, you don't want those type of correctionals. So 2063 is a bit of a warning because that civil law is not pretty. Mm. Although my main character benefits from land grabbing, you know, people who are running away, things are being sold. That's how he actually becomes rich. Eh? He's a civil law profiteer, but it's a but he loses a wife, eh? uh, and that's right at the start of the book. But I, I kept thinking, I have another book I wrote very long ago, around 10 years ago, called mm. The Road to Eldoret, mm. from my own PV experience. But it's like if you start getting mini strokes, yeah. one day you might get an, yeah. an debilitating stroke. So these are warning. If we keep up with our ethnicity, we right. keep voting alongside those lines. Yeah. Um, in a country that has become so greedy, everything is being grabbed. There's a possibility of 2033 happening. And we owe the Chinese so much. Yeah. yeah. Of course, they can come uh, like a cataclysm. So what happens yes. if, the, if 23 actually happens the way you've said it in your book? 2033. Yeah, that civil war. Nations correct. Eh? If you look at Rwanda, but it took like a million deaths. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's a horrible thing. No one wants an organic, they call organic constitutional moments. Right. I don't want that scenario to ever come true, mm. you know, uh, you know, not just even for our sex, but right. you know, for, our children's for the sake children. of young people yeah. like yeah. you, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, little kids like, you know, my Leo, yeah. right? we don't want, but it can happen. Mm. So it's a nightmare path. Mm. I hope when we read, you see how it can build up. Mm. Eh? Yeah. And, uh, and that's just 15 years from today. Right. So I, like, I like what it says here on the third paragraph. It is a strange technological landscape of a world that lies 46 Junes from the present one, but also a very human story about what it means to be a twilight of mortality. Um, Dr. Matunda, this is, this, this is quite interesting because it shows how as a nation we will be with the impact of technology, as you said, yep. virtual reality and so forth. But as a publisher, how is it that... Um, Technology in this day and age probably has changed the game. How has right. technology um, changed how publishers go about publishing books? So, uh, technology is good because uh, it uh, has given us a huge market reach. Without technology, honestly, us as a publisher we probably would not be in publishing mm -hmm. because it offers us uh, distribution mechanisms that where we can reach more people. Mm -hmm. uh, we can reach authors in the Caribbean in Canada, in Europe, wherever, and publish them. And then the distribution channels allow that. Secondly, there is this thing called electronic uh, books, e-books. E-books go with technology. You can carry it, you can take it wherever you want. Yeah. In fact, some books you animate. Yeah? You can animate books and make the formats in which now we can present a content are many and diverse with the use of technology. Mm. Uh, and, uh, you know, people like to read, they like to drive. So you can have audiobooks, you can have all this. The other side of things is that uh, because electronic, uh, I mean, technology has made it easy to share material. Yeah. The downside is that there's a lot of plagiarism, a lot of uh, people buying without uh, respecting copyright, 
people pirating and sharing and so on. So there's there's the benefit side for us, which is we can do more. But there are also the challenges. There, there are challenges in that uh, technology makes it easy for people to pirate books. All if right. I send this book now to India, someone can produce a replica. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> well critics critic say because of technology, yeah. um, print is dying. What do you say to I, that has been in the works for the last, I think, 40, 50, 40 years. You remember, we still do newspapers, mm -hmm. print newspapers. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is complementary. A lot of people grow up reading books, physical books. If you lie on your couch, it's unlikely that you can have your e-reader on you. Like, I mean, it doesn't feel like Real. you're reading. Right. So, okay. But it does complement. In fact, uh, there is research that shows it. Eh? The more your book appears on the e-platforms, the more it's bought as hard copies. Okay. So as, as much as that is a threat, it also complements the sale of physical books. Okay. So Smita, what do you say to, uh, as a journalist, as, as an mm -hmm. author, um, what do you say when people say um, print is dying? Um, there's something called tactile touch. Mm. Uh, people need to feel things. But again, just like I've said in the book, um, at that time, we have got even, a, let's say, intimate things eh, happening in the book where people attra uh, attach, for example, electrodes to genitalia mm. to replicate, say, their pornographic mm. experiences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's happening mm -hmm. in the book, eh? mm -hmm. beyond Samantha. Mm -hmm. This book is beyond <laughs> Samantha, the sex book. Yes, yes. And I don't know if tactile touch will ever quite go away. Right. We, I, I can't imagine it. Right. I know Dr. Matunda mm -hmm. certainly cannot. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe you can begin to imagine a world where all your, like in the book, where all your, you put fake fingernails, mm. but they're actually attached to various technologies. Yeah. And even the dresses you are wearing yeah. are like, can do advertisements and so on, like, like you as an Wearable technology. Person. Yes, as an anchor person. Right. Uh, they can advertise with like your clothes. Yeah. Because it's already happening. Yeah. Like shimmer clothes. Yeah. 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 And things like shoes. Is this why it took you yes. four years to write this book, Smita? Because you had confessed to me that you had written, I think, two more or one more book as you were still writing this one. <laughs> this book was very intense. Eh? Yeah. So I took a break from it by writing two other books. But yeah. those, are, those are small, small ones. Uh, they, are, they are like uh, young adult novels. Mm. I wrote Ran Cheche Ran. Mm -hmm. And I wrote a, a book called, a small terrorism book called A Jacket for Hamet. It, in between, eh? yeah. but those ones sort of took me each like three months eh? in write. between. Because this world, it's also a world for mortality. My main character is old. So there's a lot of also like thinking of life and death. I felt as if I was 88 years old at the time. Wow. All right. But, but let, let, me, let me also add that uh, <laughs> get, uh, for writers, and uh, this is uh, something we are really campaigning for as publishers, writers need to have time to reflect, mm. to give us their creative imagination that adds to the milieu of ideas that we have. We enjoy books, but from books and ideas is where we can lay the path that we follow in the future. Mm? So one of the things that uh, some of us have been campaigning for is that uh, we need means to support authors like Tony to be able to take time off to reflect because they are really contributing to society. Mm -hmm. Sometimes at a huge personal expense, huge personal expense, where they take time uh, on their own, it costs them. But who ends up benefiting from the ideas is society. Mm. I think we have an obligation to invest in them. Two, the knowledge industry uh, defines the character of a nation. So if you read 2063, uh, you can get the thinking of a Kenyan, another Kenyan. And if we had several people, a lot of publishing coming out, then it can define the collective character of who we are. Right now, uh, our authors are really stretched in terms of uh, resources, in terms of time. In other countries, what people do, they put endowments, government investments, to ensure that uh, uh, individuals, uh, like authors like Tony Mochama, can have the time to reflect and challenge us, and from then on, we have a chance to build foundations for a strong nation. Because without ideas, eh, we then uh, operate from substantial ignorance. Do you <laughs> agree, Smita? I agree 
uh -huh. yes, that there are challenges as as an author you face in terms of time and um, uh, and equipment resources. Yes. yes, this book, I was fortunate enough, eh, if uh, the zero in there's something here called Miles Moreland Foundation, mm. and they give a grant of like uh, about two million mm. for for the actual like both research for this book. They mm. gave me two million. Mm. But this is a philanthropist in London, eh? Right. Yeah? This, this is a man who's made money from money markets. And he's still thinking, he said he doesn't see these things in Africa. Right. So he had said, don't Africans think yeah. futuristically? That that must be a lie. Wow. So there was a competition, which I was, you know, uh, the winner, for present uh, powerful, you know, books. And I remember I had the idea from Matunda earlier, present an idea and get these two million so that you can have some time and you can actually research and do things. But the sad thing in this country, of course, is like, you know, when I think about our Ministry of Culture, I want to cry. We writers want a competitive process to get things like grants. Because eh? I don't know when next I'll have, you know, be able to write a book of this, uh, you know, magnitude. Mm -hmm. right? And why is it always a white an old white man eh? coming, coming to facilitate to yes your creative Later we send mps to watch the world cup in right. russia right. give them 50 million right that they're going to benchmark right or to brazil to watch olympics right. what are mps going to benchmark yeah. to bring back are they going to train in football and get a you know and uh, what are they actually doing there mm. and that's what's very annoying mm. that they can t people can take like 50 right. million shillings give a bunch of very useless people Eh? I was very sad because Muhammad Ali used to work here, that he was in that group. And then you say you're benchmarking for footballers. Right. That's nonsense. Right. And that speaks so, volume, the fact that we are using funds for that and not perhaps with things like this that is feeding into stopping, entertainment and, and culture. to add to this, we are stopping to be a nation of ideas. Uh, We're becoming a country for the stomach. Mm -hmm. yeah. These days, everyone wishes they could just get into government. This way I'm glad this new DPP is doing his anti-corruption things and so on. Yeah. And eat the country. Do you think that Kenya is a reading culture, is a reading nation? Um, I, I, let, let me say that uh, we, we are not where we should be right. as a reading nation. Right. And uh, that's really a major downside and it's reflected on our economic indicators. Mm -hmm. uh, people read, uh, broaden their minds. People read, have a chance to debate ideas. People read have a chance to learn from other people's experiences. And that collectively forms a stronger foundation for uptake. Think about it. Eh? Uh, today, we have M-Pesa that we take for granted. If somebody didn't have the chance to think about it and innovate and get the support to bring it to, to the market, we wouldn't be benefiting all as a country, as a mm -hmm. nation, as a world. You get it? Uh, we have scientists, we have people here. In fact, if we go to our research institutions, our academia, people are bubbling with ideas. But we need an environment that supports it. So we build a culture from the uh, primary school, kindergarten, where kids grow up understanding that ideas count. And where they can see people with ideas succeeding. People with ideas that transform society being honored, respected and given a chance to contribute as they should, then we can build that culture. That reading culture is but, but if we, we are talking about hustling, and hustling is what we glorify, mm. that's what our kids will become. All right. Yeah. Because of time, Sweet, I would love for you to have the last say, and perhaps what I would love to hear from you mm -hmm. is that given that you've been an author for quite a while now, mm -hmm. what's the difference between the book that you wrote 10 years ago and your latest book right now in terms of perhaps your mind and your skills and where you are right now? Do you feel as if there's a difference? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, 10 years ago, yeah. I wrote uh, exactly 10 years ago, it was The Road to Eldoret, because mm -hmm. it was after post-election right. violence. And that's the book I was writing. At the time I was thinking, if, we, if we're all going to die or something, because we were not sure what's going on. I said, let me at least write about this experience. And that, that was the book for the time. Right. In 2018, uh, you know, with the Dr. Matunda's facilitation, mm -hmm. um, I've written a book called 2063 because um, the future is so fragmented and uncertain for us at this time. Yeah? Kenya is in a place where, you know, as, you know post handshake and everything, we are like the, the malls are going down in the country. 
our country right now is all of it is on riparian land. Mm. The future is on riparian land mm. with yellow Chinese faces waiting to call in our debts and people betting on bets. Right. So I think this was the time mm, for this write. particular uh, novel. Book. Yeah. yeah, it's so timely. All right, yes. thank you so much for coming, both of you. Um, Smita, who has written the book 2063, a, a very visionary book, and Dr. Matunda Nanchama, he's the CEO of Nesima Publisher, the publishing company behind it. Let's take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we'll give an update of stories making headlines on the international front, plus also the containers that are around. Have you seen them and how they have moved, they changed into homes? The containers have you guys seen them yeah, yes, yes. we have people who are future. doing that's the future yes we have people who are doing that and i can't wait for you to meet them here in studio